What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video here in Chicago. Undisclosed location. We have a one, two, three game. Yes, three blinds. I'm in for a thousand dollars. Let's get right into the hands. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Leave a comment down below if you guys have been enjoying the vlogs in 2023. Let's get into the hands. Let's go. We're into the one, two, three game for $1,000. Before I go any further, I wanted to let all you wild Canadians know that I'm doing a meetup game on February 1st and 2nd. That's Wednesday and Thursday, so in two and three days from now at 7 p.m. to like midnight, I'll be there playing the 2-5 game at Playground Poker Club in Montreal. Any of you guys that are Canadian and like the vlog, come out and make it. I'll be sure to put all you guys in the video. But enough of the promo, let's get into the hands. All right, you guys, we look down at two snowmen. It's snowing here in Chicago, no uh, coincidence. We look down at pocket eights from the third blind. I have a cool $1,000 in my stack. In the middle position puts a $6 straddle on. Our buddy San, who's been a regular in a lot of the videos, raises it up to $18. I decided to just call in this spot instead of going for a re-raise, and that means we are going heads up to a flop, which comes 10-9-6 all diamonds. After San bets $5, we take another look at our hand. I see I have a gutter to a straight flush, so I decide to put in the call. Kind of a funny bet by San, but on the turn comes the straight. It's the seven of spades, and I check it over to San once again. San decides to bet out for $30 and I could go for a check raise. Instead, I just toss in a call bringing in the river card which comes the king of clubs. I check it over to him for a third time. He bets out for $55 this time. I call once again. He turns over 8-4 of clubs and we're gonna chop with our straight. But uh, you can see the difference in hands pre-flop. He's playing 8-4, I'm playing pocket eights. Let's see how that works out for us in the long run. All right, we've definitely upgraded hands now. We go from eights to American Airlines. The bullets from the hijack. Middle position opens it up to $15 and the player on my right puts in the call. I am going nowhere. I'm not calling, I'm not folding. I'm obviously coming in for a raise and I decide to make it $55. And both players put in the call. So good action here at this private game. We are going three ways in position to a flop. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. The flop comes all low cards at 6-4 deuce. The opponents will have range advantage on this board. I'm not gonna have too many sixes, fours, and deuces. Two pair is just pretty much out of my range at this point. But the action doesn't check to me because the first guy checks it over to the low jack and he decides to bet out for $37. I think a raise is the best move. If he's betting out here, he could have a straight draw, a flush draw. Sure, he could have a set or two pair, but he doesn't have too much left in his stack, so I wanna play for all of it and I decided to raise them up to $105. The opponent on my right jams for 170 total. I obviously put in the call. We're gonna go off to a turn and a river. Turn comes the jack of hearts, the river comes the nine of spades. The opponent turns over a six four offsuit of the red variety, and that's gonna get him rewarded with that $500 pot. Just like that, aces are cracked. All right, next hand, ace king offsuit. Let's see if we can win one with this hand. I'm in the third blind, the small blind opens it up to $15. The big blind makes it $40 now and the action's on me. So we have an open from the small blind, the big blind comes in for the three bet. You know I got a four bet here with ace king off. And I decided to jam all in covering both players so it's around $445 effective. Small blind gets out of the way and the big blind puts in the call. That's the guy who got me in that last hand with the two pair. So uh, hopefully we can get some of our money back. When he puts in the call, the flop comes ace 4-4, four, four, giving me top pair. We're now beating all of his pocket pairs, of course, except for pocket fours, but he's not Ethan. I don't think he's playing that hand. Let's see what the turn and river bring in. They both come a deuce. I turn over my cards, and uh, we're gonna scoop that $905 pot, getting back our chips and then some. All right, another beautiful hand. I like down at king queen of diamonds from the small blind. The button puts a $15 straddle on, so I'm first to act from the small blind and I make it $50. When the action folds back around to him, he decides to raise all in $200. This is the guy who I just stacked and uh, I can't go anywhere with king queen of diamonds. I put in the call. Of course, when he straddles the button, he gets rewarded with the best hand ever created. Pocket, aces, and we're off to a run out. Flop comes ace high, so I'm a 3% chance to win this hand. Turn comes a queen, and I'm dead in the water with the four of diamonds on the river. And he's gonna take down that $400 pot. It'd be nice if some other people on the table would play a hand for once. Moving right along, I look down at king jack offsuit from the plus one position. I open it up to $20, and we get three callers. That means we are going four ways to a flop. The flop comes jack three deuce all clubs. 
So yeah, we're out of position, but we do in fact have top pair with the king of clubs. Maybe we could back into a flush. I decided to check because I'm out of position against a bunch of other players, and the action checks around bringing in the three of spades on the turn. And the action's on me. I now decide to bet out for 25 bucks into the $86 pot. It's possible we can get some worse jacks to call, maybe some pocket pairs, maybe someone with a worse flush draw, and the cutoff and the button both want to see a river. So uh, dealer, let's see what the river card brings in. They're bringing in the chips. The river gives me a flush. It comes with six of clubs. I now decide to bet really small. It's kind of like a blocker type bet and I make it $15. My logic was if I decide to check and trap here with the king of clubs, um, it's possible they just check behind. But if I go for a small bet, they might raise me or they might just put in a call with a worse club and we'll get an extra 30 bucks of value. So when I put in the $15, that's in fact what happens. Both players put in the call. I turn over my hand and they both muck their cards. So just like that, we're gonna take down an additional $30 worth of value, scooping that $200 pot with our rivered flush. Moving right along, I decide to play the king four of clubs from the button when the action folds to me. I raise it up to $15 and our buddy San in the third blind decides to put in a call. That brings us off to a flop which comes king eight deuce with one club. I bet out for 10 bucks, he puts in the call, bringing out the turn which comes the queen of hearts. The action checks through on the turn, giving me the king of hearts on the river. I have three of a kind and now he decides to lead out for $23. Leading out in the river is a little bit strange. Either he has a better king, a bluff, or maybe a flush. For that reason, I think just a call here is the right move. As weird as that sounds, I have three of a kind and I'm just gonna call a donk bet on the river. But that's what I decide to do and I just wanna slow row him as well. This would be fun. If I put in the call here and he says he has like an eight and then I can pretend to muck my cards and then show him the goods, but that's not what happens. He gets the better of me here and he shows 10 deuce of hearts. Remember earlier he played ace four of clubs? Well, I guess 10 deuce of hearts is just as good as that. And uh, it's sure as hell good enough to take down this $100 pot. All right, let's play a slightly better hand than 10 deuce of hearts. I looked down at pocket aces once again from the cutoff and I raise it up to $20. The button puts in the call. That means we are heads up out of position to a flop and it comes king five three with two spades. I'm out of position against the button and I decide to play my hand a little bit differently than I normally would. You usually should be betting out in this spot, but I decide to check and uh, balance my checking range a little bit in this game. Unfortunately, the opponent decides to check behind, bringing in the deuce of spades on the turn. We now have a straight flush draw, our second straight flush draw of the session. I decide to bet out for $30 into the opponent and he puts in the call giving us essentially the nuts on this board unless someone has a hand like four six of spades. That would be the only hand that could have me beat given the fact I have the ace of spades in my hand. There's $106 in the middle and in case he's playing a pocket pair in a weird way or maybe he checked behind a king on the flop, I decide to polarize my hand, make it look like I have the nuts or a bluff and I bet out for a cool $100. The opponent thinks about it for a while which uh, he's giving me no credit for my hand but ultimately decides that I do in fact have the best hand and unfortunately folds his cards. So even though I'm taking down that pot, it feels like I could have won a little bit more. All right, maybe we can get back to back flushes. I looked down at ace deuce of spades this time for middle position and I raise it up to $15. Player in the third blind puts in the call. That means we are heads up to a flop, which gives me bottom pair. It comes queen, jack, deuce, rainbow. I decide to bet out for $10 and the opponent puts in the call, giving us the three of a kind on the turn. Bang, the turn comes the deuce of diamonds. Opponent checks to me for a second time and I'm gonna go for a pot size bet. A lot of hands to get value from here like top pair, second pair, maybe a flush draw or straight draw. So I decided to bet out for $55 into the $53 pot. But unfortunately, just like the last hand when I bet pot, they find the fold. All right, five, six offsuit from the straddle. Middle position opens it up to 15 and the third blind puts in the call, bringing in me as well. I decided to put in the call, leading us off to a flop, which gives me an up and down straight draw. It comes nine, four, three with two spades. The action checks over to middle position and he bets out for $15. I'm not going anywhere, but I don't want to put in the check raise just yet. So that means I put in the 15 bucks, bringing us off to the turn, which comes another spade. It's the ace of spades this time. This time when I check, he decides to check behind. I think he'd bet all of his strong hands in this spot, so either he's scared of a spade flush or he just has a weak hand. We 
which is good information to note for maybe the river bluff. The dealer puts out the river and it's the seven of clubs. Bang, we river the straight. There are three spades on board, so you have to be a little bit cautious, but I think when he checks behind on the turn, you can kind of eliminate all the flushes out of his range. So I decided to bet out for $65 into the $81 pot. After seeing my $65 bet, he postures himself before going for the raise. He makes it $340. It's kind of absurdly large. It's like a 6x raise from my $65 bet, and uh, alarm bells are going off in my head. What hands could he be possibly raising here with? If he checked behind a flush on the turn, that'd obviously be a great hand to go for a raise here with. I don't think any of his sets are going to be raising this large here, so it's pretty much either a flush or a bluff. And I think he just has way more bluffs in this spot. And given the way I played this hand, my hand doesn't exactly look too strong. Maybe he thinks he could just win the $65 bet on the river with a large raise. So sometimes in poker, you have to put your money where your mouth is. You gotta nut up or shut up. And I decided to nut up and put my money in the middle. And uh, unfortunately this time he shows the goods, king, queen of spades. He decided to check behind the nuts on the turn. And that's gonna win him this very large pot in this one, two, three game. Unfortunate spot there for me, but I thought he polarized his hand well. And I just thought he had way more bluffs than value there, but nice hand, sir. All right, pocket aces now from the big blind. I gotta get my money back with these. Surely it's my third time looking down at aces tonight in this session, and yet I'm stuck like $400. Beautiful spot for us when the cutoff raises it up to $35. I decide to 3-bet to $125, given the fact I'll be out of position the entire way. You want to go kind of large. And uh, good news for us, he puts in the call. So at least we probably have an 80% chance of winning this. Let's see what the flop brings in. The flop's interesting. It comes 10-9 deuce rainbow. So unless he has a hand like pocket 10s or pocket 9s, we're probably in great shape here. I decide to bet out for $85, and the opponent puts in the call. He doesn't only have to have 10s and 9s when he calls here. He could have Jack Queen, Jack 8, 8, 7. He could even have a hand like Ace 10 or Ace 9. So I should be still ahead of a large portion of his range when we're off to the turn, which isn't the best card in the world. It comes the 8 of clubs. I decide now because I'm out of position and this isn't a great card, I don't want to bet and then get raised. So instead, I like to go into check call mode and I start with a check on the turn. The opponent decides to check behind, which is interesting. I don't really think he'd do this with queen jack. Although I said that in the last hand and look how that played out. So uh, when he checks behind on the turn, I'm kind of excluding all the sets and straights out of his range. But let's see what the river card brings in. The river now pairs the top card. It comes a 10 of spades. And I actually decide to rip it all in here, which is kind of a mistake now looking at it. He might be checking back on the turn with a 10, in which case he's just going to snap call me here. Any of his worst hands that have a 9 in it or other random pocket pairs, even pocket jacks here might find an easy fold. So I think this all in is actually a mistake. I probably should have gone a lot smaller or just check again and try to pick off some bluffs. When I go all in, sure enough, he does find a fold. It is nice to take down that $400 pot, but that could have been a disaster if he had a random 10x in his hand. All right, two hands to go. I look down at ace-king offsuit from the small blind. The button opens it up to $15, and I put in the three bet to 55. He puts in the call, leading us off to a flop, which comes king, king, queen, bang, we flop three of a kind. I decide to bet out for $40, expecting him to call. A lot of good things there for him to call with, like straight and flush draws. Or, of course, he could have a worse king, and then I'm doubling through him. Of course, none of that happens. When I bet out for half pot, he folds pretty quickly, and uh, only $115 is coming my way, leading us into the last hand of the night, where I look down at ace-jack offsuit from the cutoff, and I decide to three-bet the low-jack open, all the way up to the $45 price you see on your screen. The button puts in the call, and he's the only one to do so, which leads us heads up to a flop, which gives me two pair, ace-queen-jack with two spades. I decide to check it over to the button because I'm out of position and he cold called my $45 raise pre, so not really sure what to make of that. When I check it over to him, he decides to check behind, bringing in the three of hearts on the turn. I'm now gonna get some value and I bet out half pot for 45 bucks, to which he says, no way Jose, he folds, waving the white flag and we're gonna take down that last hand of the night. When it's all said and done, I rack up my chips and head over to the cage, exchanging them for some cold hard cash. 
All right, guys, that wraps up that uh, one, two, three session. Got in for a thousand, got out for 757, so a net loss of 243 in around four hours of play. But I heard the game on Wednesday gets even bigger, some 10K stacks. Who knows? I'm gonna have to come back for those. If you guys have made it this far, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below. Good luck on the felt as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.